The Kent School District board meetings are held in public on the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month at 7 p.m. at the Administration Center in accordance to the Washington State Open Public Meetings Act. Regular meetings include presentations and reports dealing with district operations as well as time set aside for public comment. Now here are your Kent School District Board of Directors. Welcome to tonight's board meeting. Welcome to our first board meeting of 2018. We are glad you're here. We're going to start tonight with our Pledge of Allegiance and I've asked Leslie Hamada if she would lead us in that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Thank you again. Welcome to our meeting. Um, I'd like to start by excusing President Van de Dossalem. She is out of country um, with some family issues that she's dealing with and will be gone for um, at least a few weeks. So she appreciates any well wishes that you may want to send to her virtually. Um, and while she is out of country, I will be acting as president. So just so you know what's happening there. Again, welcome to our meeting. This is a meeting of the board, which is held in public to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act. We will allow opportunity for public comment later in the agenda. If you would like to adjust the board on an agenda item, please fill out one of these cards. They are in the back and bring it up prior to that agenda item. You will have three minutes to address the board and then we will also have public comment at the end where you'll also have three minutes to speak. So Dr. Watts, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? And also, um, just really quick, I wanna make sure that we do have in the minutes that we are excusing um, Maya. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Vice President Strauss. Uh, there, there is a supplemental personnel report that has been added. Uh, to the consent agenda, and a copy of that report is beside you on the dais. Thank you. So I would like a motion to accept the supplemental personnel agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. So we will starting tonight um, with some recognition, and I will turn the first one over to Dr. Watts. Thank you, Vice President Strauss, members of the board, Ms. Howie, community and friends. I will be reading uh, a school board recognition proclamation in recognition of you, our leaders uh, on the dais. And so while virtually, uh, President Vengadasalam will also be here in, in spirit to uh, each and every one, a proclamation of the state of Washington. Whereas the mission of Washington's public school system is to assure that all students achieve at high levels and possess the knowledge and skills to be responsible citizens of a democratic society and enjoy productive and satisfying lives. And whereas the Washington's 295 locally elected school boards and nine selected educational service district boards are the core of the public education governance system in our state and whereas the districts and regions they lead serve more than one million students, have a combined annual budget of approximately 15 billion, with a B, dollars, and employ close to 120,000 people. And whereas school directors play a crucial role in promoting student learning and achievement by creating a vision, establishing policies and budgets, and setting clear standards of accountability for all involved. And whereas school directors are directly accountable to the citizens in their districts and regions and serving as a vital link between members of the community and their schools. And whereas school directors and educational service districts provide a passionate voice of advocacy for public schools and the welfare of school children. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize school directors as outstanding volunteers and champions for public education. Now, therefore, I, Jay Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington, do hereby proclaim January 2018 as School Board Recognition Month in Washington, and I encourage all people in our state to join me in this special observance. Signed, 29th day of December, 2017, Governor Inslee. Let's join me in giving our school board an <laughs> Thanks. And we'll, we'll join you 
together for pictures in a, in a moment. All right. So, are we? Are we <coughs> yes. And I will call. Thank you. <laughs> Faith Sisley, who is here right now, thank you to her. <laughs> like, yes, introducing you're, myself. No, you're not, you're not, I appreciate that. To introduce <laughs> our union presidents, PTA, and other dignitaries in the audience. Faith? Good evening, uh, Vice President Strauss, board members, Dr. Watson, Ms. Halley. I'm here on behalf of um, the uh, students and staff and uh, everybody here in the district and our community to, to express our sincere thank you tonight for all the work that you do, the selfless hours you put in. Um, I often say that you are my heroes. I know you've heard me say that before because um, of all the extra work that you do. So we really appreciate you. Um, but I'm sure you don't want to hear from me, but let's hear from the other um, folks in the room and from students who have provided presentations for tonight. Um, so introduce you uh, first is uh, Christy Padilla from the uh, Kent Education Association. <laughs> or Scott Abernathy from the Kent Ritual Association. <laughs> they, were, they were discussing who wanted to go first. So. <laughs> I thought I was going second, so. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I wrote a few things down and, and I left it on my chair. So you are just going to have to listen to me, I guess, speak from the heart right now. Um, I, I truly, on behalf of the KEA and um, teacher certi certificated staff in um, our district, that we really do appreciate your leadership. Um, I know firsthand that um, it's always easy to be a leader when things are going well, but when things um, are tough, that's when um, a true leader shows their um, abilities and you are all outstanding. Um, we are going through a tough time, but we're getting better. And um, I think it's because of your leadership and um, we will we will rise and be on top again. And um, when we are, uh, we will celebrate all together. So thank you so much um, for your dedication, your time and your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Good evening, Acting President Strauss <laughs> and Directors Hardy, Daniels, and DeBuehler. My name is Scott Abernathy, and I have the very real privilege to represent our Kent Principal Association members. In 1981, I began my career in Kent. Some of you know that. As a result, I've had the privilege to work with many dedicated individuals who have served on our board of directors. During this time, I've noticed a few characteristics that you share with those who sat in those seats before you. While each set of eyes have been unique, some brown, blue, others gray or green, some framed by glasses and others remained as sharp as the day they were born. They've all shared a vision. How this district could and can help prepare our students for their future. Some voices have been deep and demanding, others soft but passionate. Each voice has been used to guide our district. I've seen hands that have been well manicured and others with dirt under their fingernails. All hands have held our students' dreams while pushing them toward the future they are prepared for. Bodies, some big, some small, some tall, some short, but each containing a heart that burst with the loving caring of our students, staff, and community. And finally, the feet. So many different shoes have walked across this floor but each pair was filled with an incredibly dedicated person who at the sacrifice of their personal life, and I recognize the sacrifice you make, help all of those in our district achieve. Mm -hmm. So this is you, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your commitment, passion, and vision. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Janine Weber, the Senior Vice President for the Kent Area PTA Council, and Lynette Sargent.
Good evening. Uh, is that better? Good evening. Can you hear that? <laughs> okay. Uh, I am Janine Weber, Executive Vice President of the uh, Ken Area PTA Council, and uh, Lynette Sargent is our Advocacy Chair this year. Uh, we'd like to thank you for this opportunity to have a, a few minutes on your agenda tonight uh, and represent our President Heidi Dupuy, who couldn't be here tonight, our Council, and also our over 3,000 members, um, because we would like the Board to know, especially the new members of the Board, uh, that we recognize and value the sacrifices that you make the, and uh, the service that you provide to our schools, our community, our teachers, and especially our children. We recognize that, like us, you're volunteers. And you do what you do because you care deeply about children and you want to make a difference. We feel the same. As parents, we feel very strongly that education is a partnership between the school and the family. And we want you to know that we stand ready to work with you and support you in your efforts. And especially when your efforts are supporting all of our children. So in the spirit of that partnership, I want to recall the immortal words of the Three Musketeers. <laughs> you know what that is. All for one, one for all. And also in the spirit of that partnership, we want to provide a small token <laughs> to symbolize our partnership and our appreciation for all that you do. Thank you. And before we move on, I wanted to ask, are there any other union groups uh, represented tonight that would like to express appreciation? Okay. Um, so the next uh, portion we will go on to our school presentations. Um, as you can see around the room, there are beautiful posters, so creative and inventive, and um, our schools have provided them. And there's also a few cards there at your um, desk there that uh, the, uh, kids from Kim Meridian um, Academy made. Oh, no, Kim Mountain View Academy made them. So you can read those at your leisure. Um, so I just wanted to really quickly read a list of the schools. There's also a list provided. Um, Cedar Heights, Covington Elementary, Crestwood Elementary, Daniel, East Hill, Glen Ridge, Horizon, Kent Elementary, Kent Mountain View Academy, Kent Lake, Kentwood, Meadow Ridge, Meeker, Meridian Elementary, Neely O'Brien, Pine Tree, and Springbrook are the schools that contributed this year. Every year it's a different mix of schools. Sometimes schools repeat, um, but I just am so uh, thankful that you're doing your work and that um, the schools are sharing their appreciation. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to some cute videos <laughs> and um, of, of short PowerPoint. I'll introduce now Principal Collins from Reading Elementary, who will join us here. And I'll try to figure out the tech as we go along here. Okay, good evening, school board members, Dr. Watts, Ms. Holly. Thank you very much for all that you do. We appreciate each and every one of you for supporting our students. Um, at Meridian Elementary, we have what we call our ambassadors. They are our leaders, our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students are selected to be on this ambassador team. We had 124 this year, and Dr. Watts, we invited him to come, and he came, and they ringing through the ringer, but he came out smiling, and we gave him cupcakes and cake afterwards, so it was really nice. So we we just enjoy all that you do. I want you to know that our students were very, um, it took quite a while to decide what we were going to do. We're like, well, we have new members, so we have to do something different for the different members that they have now. So we said, well, we did a video once with a time capsule of what it would be like in 100 years. We did that. Then we did the game Kahoot so we could work with the technology for the students who were like, so what else can we do? And then they said, let's just make it real honest, sincere, and sweet for this year. So we said, okay, because we want to be very nice to them because they work very hard for us. So that was their idea for this. So that's the reason for this PowerPoint. And again, um, our president of our ASB was supposed to come, but he got the cold. And um, so he's not feeling very well. So um, otherwise he would have been here for this. But we would like to thank you from Meridian Elementary. And let's see if it goes. And that's what it says. There were supposed to be the bubbles and all of that first and then thank you. So thank you again. Thank you. 
And uh, next is a video from Kent Elementary School. Let me go there. Dear Kent School Board members, thank you for being our number one supporters. Thank you for hiring the best teachers so they can educate us and teach us the Common Core standard. Thanks, Thanks for, for your, your support, support, your kindness, and allowing Kent District students to, to represent, represent our cultures and who we are. Thank you so much. Sincerely, Team Mason. I love those kids. <laughs> and um, next is a video from Meridian, or from Meadow Ridge. <coughs> oh, actually, it's on the desktop, so I need to go here. ครับคุณครับเตลมากาเซเตลมากาเซนิเจจากูยูเซเชมาลงนวิโลวาเจจูกุปะอากอนเอ็มควายตมอาริกาโตคานาเดนาซาโบเคสเนนเซเตนเค
Dear Lord, SEL classes want to thank you for your It's great to be alive. It's great to be alive. Thank you, school board. Thank you, school board. Thank you, Miss School Board. And that concludes our presentation tonight. And again, our sincere appreciation for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so are we doing, this says we're doing pictures now. Are we doing them now? Or we'll do it after. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so we'll do pictures after our next proclamation. So um, the next proclamation that we have tonight is on National Youth Mentoring Month. And... Um, this is near and dear to my heart, so I'm going to go ahead and yeah, I know others as well. So, um, whereas the Kent School District recognizes that its success depends on ensuring all students succeed in school and reach their full potential in life, and realizes that students need a solid foundation of support that will help them become well-educated, confident, and productive citizens, and whereas mentoring is a proven and effective strategy that helps students by matching them with caring, responsible adults who can provide guidance and direction and build their confidence. And whereas research shows that mentoring has beneficial and long-term effects for students by increasing their chances of high school graduation and college attendance and decreasing the likelihood of substance abuse and other risky behaviors, and whereas mentoring strengthens our community's economic and social well-being by being by helping students fulfill their potentials while helping maintain healthy families and promoting a more vibrant community. And whereas the National Mentoring Month is an opportunity to raise public awareness of the importance of mentoring, recognizing that the dedicated individuals who serve mentors and who encourage more citizens to help build a brighter future for Kent's youth through mentoring. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Kent School District Board of Directors proclaims January 18 as National Mentoring Month and urges all citizens to recognize the importance of mentoring to look for opportunities to serve as mentors in their community. So I know we have Dee Clem here tonight um, with Communities and Schools. I'd like to present this to her. Okay. Before you do that, can we have all the mentors in the yes. audience? So anyone who's served as a mentor, if you could please stand and be recognized. And there are a few up here. Where's Allison? Allison? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Yes, thank you. Acting President Strauss, Dr. Watts, Ms. Hallie, thank you so much for taking the time to recognize and honor our mentors. Communities and Schools greatly appreciates our partnership with the district and are proud that in 2017 we had over 100 volunteers who were matched with over 150 students in the district. Um, you mentioned some of the impact of mentoring. I have a few numbers to go with that. Students who have mentors are 52% less likely to skip school and 46% less likely to start using illegal drugs. For students who have a mentor but face an opportunity gap, 55% of them are more likely to enroll in college. And for us at Communities and Schools of Kent in 2017, 91% of the students we served improved academically. <coughs> But more importantly, I want to share a little bit about what the students have to say about mentoring. From a third grader, she helped me with numbers and having a good attitude. From a fourth grader, she helped me feel good about life. From a fifth grader, it made me feel happy about school and less boring. And from some high school students, my mentor Karen is a great mentor. I can tell she cares about me and the decisions I make. She is sweet and nice and easy to talk to. She is active in the Kent School District. I like that. She's pretty cool. <laughs> My mentor, Alan, is an overall great guy, not only as a mentor, but as a friend. He has a lot of the same interests as me, such as cars and hockey, and that's awesome. He gave me the motivation to catch up in my class when I fell behind, and that has helped me in the long run. I thank him for that. So Dr. Watts, Karen, Debbie, and all the other mentors who are here tonight, thank you. If you have any interest in mentoring, I would love to talk with you. Thanks. Yes.
I believe at this point we are pausing for photos. So we'll start with the school board. By ourselves? By ourselves, I guess. You know where to go. That seems weird. <laughs> that challenge that next year when we take this picture I'd love to see everybody that's in this audience up with us for the picture for mentoring so just a little bit of a challenge yeah. so <laughs> all right so at this time we have we have reached 3.0 on our um, board agenda 3.01 is a public hearing so we will recess the board meeting for a public hearing to receive comments on resolution number 1532 to endorse proposition one educational programs and operations levy and proposition two capitals improvement and tech levy any person wishing to submit written or spoken comment for or against resolution 1532 may do so at this time are there any comments An uncomfortable pause where I just being sure. Um, so hearing no comments at this time, the hearing is now closed and the regular meeting will resume. So we are on 4.01, resolution 1532, endorsement of educational programs and operation and capital improvements and technical levies. At this time, I would like to ask for a motion to approve resolution fifth, number 1532. Move to approve resolution number 1532. Thank you. I second. Thank you. All right. Is there any discussion or comments on the resolution? Okay. Um, I would just like to state that we did have a work session earlier today on levy information. And so um, the board has had an opportunity to view things as well. Right. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and call for a motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Next, we have 4.02, early hiring for certificated staff. And um, I am asking for a motion to approve the human resources offering 75 letters of intent and 25 unassigned contracts to candidates to support our Title II recruitment efforts. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Um, any discussion or questions from the board? We do have Mariah here who's able to answer any. And we had the work session earlier, and just to let the audience know that we had a work session on this earlier. Okay. Great. All right. So um, hearing no discussion, we'll go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Next is 5.01, the 2017-2018 budget status update as of December 2017. And um, Dr. Watts, would you like to introduce our presenters? I will. Thank you, Vice President 
Strauss, members of the board, I'm going to ask that uh, one of our newest members to Team KSD, Ben Rarick, who serves as Executive Director for Budget and Finance, along with uh, one of our veteran members of Team KSD, serving as Supervisor of Fiscal Services, Lisa Tyler, they will both share with us a budget status update as of December 2017. Ben, welcome. Sure. Floor Thank you. Yours. Uh, again, my name is Ben Rarick. I'm the new Executive Director of Budget and Finance, and I just want to say it's a real honor and pleasure to be on the KSD team. Um, so in discussion with leadership and speaking with Ms. Tyler, we've decided to stick with the same format that you've had before. You seem to like that, apparently. So it probably looks like the same format, but it's actually new information. So this will represent preliminary December data. Uh, and Lisa obviously is deeply familiar with this data. I'm going to ask her to present this. I'll make myself available for questions. It's, I've been here about seven physical days here, so I, 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 you'll have to well, indulge well, yeah. me if there's a few things I have to get back to you on. Um, but I'm happy to dialogue if that's what you wish. And uh, at this point, I'm going to ask Lisa to do the presentation. Thank you, Ben. Go ahead, Lisa. I can't see it. Okay. Is it coming? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. Um, it should be on the desk Yeah, okay. Let's see if it's, if it's closed. And that's your update. Okay. Thank you. There we go. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you were moral support. Yeah. <laughs> I would close down yeah, right there. Okay. Good evening, Vice President Strauss, and members of the board, Dr. Watts, Ms. Howley. So as Ben mentioned, tonight we are presenting preliminary budget status results f through the month of December. And so what that means really is that we are now a third of the way through our fiscal year, September through December. And although I, I like to um, call these preliminary uh, results, um, until Julie Lottie actually closes the month of December. We do not expect, as I present the preliminary figures at any given month, we don't expect that it, you know, material changes from this point until you see the final uh, financial report for the month of December. With that being said, those final reports are now out on the website published for September through November, so just for your review. So tonight, and again, this is the same format now that I think I've used for the past couple of presentations, so um, hopefully we're getting familiar with the format. Um, I will be covering revenues by major source, both current uh, for the month of December and year to date, expenditures by both program and object, and then a quick review of, of our current enrollment. We'll go over fund balance review, and then I, uh, anything that we might want to be looking to, you know, coming up in the next uh, upcoming months, January and February. And then, of course, there'll be opportunity for questions. So again, you know, we're a third of the way through the year. So as I, before I jump in here, um, especially related to expenditures, you would expect us to be, again, a third. So a target percentage of expenditures would be around 33.3%. Um, you can't really apply that same percentages to revenues just because we don't receive them on a even, even stream as expenditures are. But with that being said, we are hitting just about 34% of our revenue collections, you know, for whatever that's worth. It's, you know, it's not really a meaningful point, but, but we are. Um, and so both on the revenue side and the expenditure side, I can say through, de through December, we are running at very acceptable levels, just as expected. And again, right on our, very much within our budget or amended budget levels and hitting those target um, expenditure percentages. I'm also towards the end of the presentation, I will be reviewing our fund balance, again, both current month and then my projection for the end of the year. And just to keep in mind, those projections are based on current spending levels as well as historical spending patterns. So, you know, it's, it, there's a model that's involved that I use to derive that, that ending fund balance. So it, it is based on um, historical data. <coughs> Okay, jumping into revenues by major source. What we're showing here is the amounts that we've received currently for in the month of December. That's this column here. And then year-to-date collections. The 
percent of, of the budgeted revenues collected, I'm using the amended budget amount, so um, that'll be true for both the expenditures and the revenues, but you can see, again, we're running at 34 percent of our of our budgeted revenues, and everything looks perfectly normal. The trends, the the levels of, of collections are very, uh, very normal. So no no issues with revenues at this point. Expenditures by major program. So again, I'm showing for the month of December expenditures for for the month right here, year to date, amounts that are encumbered by by program, and then the, this column shows the budget available. And you can see here we're running very close to 33.3%. And it all, I also show a comparison for the, for the previous year. And I'd like to talk to that a little bit because you might think, well, you know, if, we're, if, we're, if we have spending controls in place and if we're trying to spend less, shouldn't we be running slightly less? Yes. But, however, keep in mind that, that this percentage is based on a lower budgeted amount. So, so you can see our amended budget is significantly less actually than the prior year budget, so that's why we don't see, if, if I were to calculate this percentage off of our adopted budget, it would not be 33, it would be probably somewhere in the high 20s. I, sh I should calculate that percentage so you can see that comparison, but but because the it's related to a, a lower budgeted amount, that makes the percent of expenditures more closely related. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. But again, expenditures are running at a very normal rate, and again, um, nothing really to, to point out that we need to be aware of at this point. So that was expenditures by major program. This, these are the same numbers, just showing it a little different way. This is expenditures by object code. So we have, again, same columns. Up on the top of the slide, we have our salaries and benefits. And um, again, you can see we're we're right on right on target with percentage of spending. So right at that third third of our spending for the year, right on target. Running a little high because remember November was our high payroll month. So that'll kind of e e even itself out as we get a couple more months um, under our belt. If we jump down here to our MSOC, that's where you can see we're really seeing some some savings and reduced spending. Um, you can see here, MSOCs are significantly down from prior year, and travel and capital outlay are, you can see, next to nothing. So that's, these are all positive signs that we are making progress with our spending controls and doing you know, our due diligence as far as um, building up our fund balance. That's, that's the hope, and this, is, this shows that you know, we're, we're doing good things to get there. Next slide shows, um, now these, this is comparing December of last year to, to December of this year, year-to-date amounts. And so you can see this is revenues, again, by major source. And so this year over last year, we are just short of 5% ahead of where we were last year. So our revenue collections are greater. And then what I also do is I just average that out to, to calculate a collection amount per month. So that's, you know, we're last year we we're collecting about 28.3 million a month. Uh, this year we're running 29.6. Um, again, a s slight increase. And then I use this is the my again through December. This would be if I if I project that out to year end, I would show total revenue collections of 341 million, and that'll come into play later in a later slide. So the same, same idea here, looking at expenditures, again, through December, or yes, through December, year-to-year -year comparison. Salaries and benefits are up slightly to almost two and a quarter percent, and that's, you know, that's expected. E even though we, we have fewer FTE, it's offset by the, the COLA that, that employees did receive, slightly higher benefit rates. So um, we wouldn't expect to see maybe a pro a, a prorational savings dollar-wise in you know based on the, the number of FTE that are fewer it's just this is where you know your COLA comes into play but again if you look at the MSOC expenditures you can see significantly less than last year so um, MSOCs are down 21 percent over over what they were last year for a net difference in expenditures of uh, a percent and a half a little over 
um, from year to year. So again, that points to the fact that you know we're we're doing what we need to do to you know turn this ship around. So that's uh, that's a good thing. And again, I, I calculate a total expenditure per month. It's just an average. Um, so we're at 29 million last year versus 28.6 this year. Decrease, good thing. And then um, I'm projecting my total, again, based on activity through December, my total expenditure should run us about 333 million. A quick look on look at uh, where we stand with enrollment right now. So this is looking at not only the K-12 basic enrollment, but also some of our other uh, other enrollments. Uh, first column is our enrollments that we budgeted, and that's what we based our budgeted funding off of. Current enrollment through December, you can see the numbers here. So we are running running ahead of our projection. And again, December, that's that's normal. We, we, we see that as far as, you know, throughout the year. OS, OSPI's projected annual average shows in this third column, and that is truly just a just an average. It's taking the first September, October, November, the first four months divided by four is is an average. So it's a little bit misleading because it's not intended to um, say that that's what your annual average is going to be. It's your annual <coughs> average as of December. So based on what our budgeted F, uh, FTE were. And then this OSPI projected annual average as of December, it looks like we're going to come out ahead, which again, that, that would be a very good thing if we were almost 200 F student FTE above our projections. That directly correlates to additional funding over and above what we budgeted for. However, before we all get too excited, enrollments do tend to decline from generally February through the spring. So. Um, probably um, January will probably look, you know, fairly, fairly good still. But from February on, this this number here, especially this 198 number, will start to decline. So um, the hope is that it doesn't decline, you know, too far. If I had to guess right now, I. I what this annual average does not take into account is that drop off in enrollment. However, ours does. So I would be inclined to think that we are going to come in much closer to our 25.8 um, enrollment number as opposed to the 26. So I'm feeling right now that we should be we should be should come in pretty close with our enrollment numbers. Fund balance. Okay, so as of December. You can see we are back in a negative fund balance. You know, not good news, um, but I'm going to say we're okay. Um, it, that follows the normal trend of fund balance levels. Of course, we would like that not to be negative, but um, I'm projecting, again, based on activity through December, I'm, I'm projecting us to end the year at 2.1 uh, million. So, um, and again, that's based on current current activity taking into account historical spending patterns and collections. And um, so that's that's where we are. That's our that's our projection as of as of today that we will end the year at, at 2.1. I will if anything comes up that we are that we might identify that that might, you know, skew that, you can you can be assured that we will be up here informing you all about you know maybe things that we might need to do but as of today we're you know we're looking okay and then this slide here i just like to show again to back up that that fund balance level pattern that again it's very normal that december is you know it's it's right here so it's we're on our down downhill slide and we are our fund balance is going to be negative until march just because until we get that next influx of property taxes in april um, that's just where we're going to be operating and, and that's again normal we just wish it was above the line <laughs> so um, and that's what i will be reporting out each month um, once we hit April, though, we should uh, be collecting the resources that we need to get us through the year and end at that, you know, hopefully 2.1 fund balance number or something pretty darn close. And then looking ahead to January, you know, the really January is a pretty quiet month. Um, nothing really that I feel I need to alert anybody to either on the revenue or expenditure side. 
um, note here just again on the on the fund balance and and just to be aware that you know we are going to be running neg in the negative uh, situation for a few months and then speaking to budget uh, we are we have started the budget development process for 1819 already and there are some very big things out there on the horizon that will dramatically affect the the 1819 school year budget so um, a lot of a lot of work will be put into that to developing the 1819 budget and uh, trust me you will be very much involved in that <laughs> and that's it for December any questions um, so I'm trying to reconcile a couple numbers and it's mainly about which ones my words more important. Um, you look at an amended budget for revenue. We're looking at like 349.3 million expected to collect. Um, but you got a 12 month projection on your looking at the year to year comparison of 341 million. So what's the difference between those two numbers? And then back to mind, which one should I, which one should we target as the one that? The, okay, sorry, Ross. The difference between these two numbers here? No. So if you go back to the revenue page, one more slide. Uh, you got 349.3. It's our amended budget for revenue that we have coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and then advance one, two, three slides. Okay. There's a 12 month projection, My projection. for revenue. Okay. That's a different number. In this case, it's, it's okay. less. I got you. Um, which one are we going to come closer to? Um, if that's the right question to ask. Okay, great question. So the 349 million off of this slide is reduced from the 356 mm -hmm. that we adopted, um, and we've already gone through that. So yep. our entire budget was reduced, both on the revenue and expenditure side. Yep. So that's the difference here. Mm -hmm. To answer your question specifically, and that's why I calculate this, is because based on the activity so far and you know historical trends that that I use to develop my projections, I would say that's the purpose of this number. Now keep in mind that the three, what was that number again? 349. 349. That does include a, some, some contingency amounts. Okay, so, um, which is always the case. You always build in contingencies on both sides. So, so, so the 349 does include some of those. Um, that's not to say that we couldn't, you know, that something couldn't come up and this will be higher. That's, that's the purpose. This number, this number will change every month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I get, as we get more data, you know, behind us and looking further ahead, that number will change. I'll be continually updating that number, that red number, and then probably most importantly is this number. Okay. Right, yeah, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. I was like, okay. the, you know, if both of them go down, I'm really looking at the difference between revenue and uh, yeah. expenditures. Which... If both go down or if, well, if both go down, mm -hmm. it's probably okay because your revenues are going down, but your expenditures are going down. If the revenues go down and the expenditures go up, well, that's not a good thing. Right, that's going to work squeeze <laughs> you know, a little bit. And if one goes up, yeah. So um, those three numbers are key. So my projected, my projected revenues, my projected expenditures, and my projected fund balance are the three, three key figures to watch. Gotcha. Then I had another question. Um, and this is if it's readily available. I don't know if everyone wants the permanent change, but when we look at, especially like expenditures year to date, Getting FTEs beside there this year over last year, just kind of understanding, you know, yeah, we're 0.09%, but that's likely because we have less people plus standard cost of living adjustments. But understanding that on a gross level, how many extra less in this case, how many less people do okay. we have FTEs? Okay, we have that data. I don't have it in my head well enough to rattle it off, but we absolutely track that every month. And so you're right. Our... Um, actually our over formula staff were actually below in certificated and it's it's our classified um, it's it's areas of classified that are typically our over formula staff right now that hasn't always been the case but but you're right so these per, these percentages here absolutely reflect that actually they answered several other questions I had so I'm good you're good yeah okay all right thank you Lisa. okay
Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right. So um, at this point, we're moving on to 6.0, which is our consent agenda. Are there any items that the board would like to pull for discussion on the committee's consent agenda? I'll pull 6.02, please. 6.02. Okay. Any others? So at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda, less 6.02. So moved. Is there a second? Second it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Ross, 6.02. This was more of a, of a question in general. We're talking about funding and out-of-district placement change, not necessarily about this change, but as we know that inclusive education, special education is not covered in basic education. If we don't have enough local levy dollars, what are our realistic options for out-of-district placement? Well, it's a part, of, part of what we have to look at is what you heard earlier today. Uh, from Dr. Decker, we'll have to take a look at all the prioritizations in terms of uh, our services to all kids. As it comes to contractual services, uh, with these contracts, uh, we're not able to meet the services for these students in-house, uh, and so we're contract. We're, we are we 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 are contracted to serve them, and so that's the answer to that one. Uh, you also heard from Executive Director uh, John Sanders in our, one of our work sessions that we continue to look at other ways to serve our students. Um, he's, we look forward to coming back to you and sharing some ideas for that. Um, so that, that's the answer to your question and where we're going next in the event something does happen, but we're going to have to take a look at all programs. Uh, we have a fair amount, quite a bit amount, of what a number of districts uh, term encroachment into basic education for special education services. That's not different from any of the district. Uh, it's just a higher amount uh, in special ed. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. yes. All right. So at this time, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve 6.02. So move to approve 6.02. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you. So I'll call for the motion. All those in favor of approving 6.02, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. So we're now on to 7.0, which is informational. So we have the financial statements available for us for November, October, and September. Does anyone have any questions or any additional information they would like on those financial statements at this time? Okay. okay. All right. So thank you. So we will go ahead and move on to 8.0, which is communication from the audience. I currently do not have any cards. Oh, I do have a card. So we could have somebody move the podium out for us here. Thank you. So um, you do have three minutes to address the board. So. Ray, Lee? Did you make it 30, Debbie? Did I make it 30? Oh, man. <laughs> I might do four. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, good evening, um, uh, board and uh, Dr. Watts. It's been a while, um, so I'm glad to be back. Um, new year. Um, first of all, um, start off on, uh, on a good note. Um, I'd like to say that it was a real pleasure um, last school year. Uh, working with um, Hugh Faulkner and his folks over in technology and handing out um, laptops at a couple of events we had here in the community. It was very, very successful. Lots of happy families, lots of happy children. So that was really, really nice. And um, this being board month, um, thank you to the board for all that you do. It's a tough job. Um, but... Uh, what you do is very appreciated. So what I'd like to speak to tonight, um, I saw a uh, video that uh, the Roadmap Project um, 
had on their website um, related to King 5 News sitting down with students over at uh, KM High School. And um, one of the questions that was uh, put to the students was, um, what do you need, what do you think you need to be successful? And then the students came back with, you know, various answers. Um, one that um, is near and dear to my heart, just as they say it's near and dear to their heart, is um, a more diverse staff in the classroom, which is something that um, I know the, the school district has been um, trying to address for decades now, not just years, but decades. And um, with some success, but not a whole lot of success. And, and please understand that, um, you know, when I, when, when I personally talk about a, a more diverse staff, I'm actually interested in that diversity of staff that represents the students that we have in this district. So as I sat here tonight looking at the video um, that the uh, Meadow Ridge students put together, for each one of those students, I'd like to see 100 staff, 200 staff that represents those students. We're in the business here and in, educating, in, in education of educating our students and the world that we are sending them out into in the 21st century is not the same world that it was 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. It's a much, much more um, inclusive and diverse world. And I believe our students benefit by the fact that we have such a diverse student body, but I think one of the one area that we fall short in is in the staff hiring and retention. And digging down deeper in that, when we hire them, for the ones who stay, bless them. For those who leave, I'm really interested in why. The, the harder question, the deeper question, you came here, you took employment, and now you're leaving. Sometimes we don't have any control over the reasons why staff leave, it, it's family or, or something like that. <laughs> That's not what I tend to hear when I talk to staff that have left. And it's that conversation and, and wherever that conversation takes us that I'm more interested in. Um, I understand that, you know, there are budget constraints going on right now, that, you know, the district's doing what's necessary to deal with that. But when I look to see that the recruitment budget has fallen from, I believe, approximately 65,000 two years ago to 3,000 for this upcoming year, doesn't really evoke a whole lot of hope in me that we are going to make a huge impact. Ray, I do you need to ask? Yeah, yeah. So it's that impact that I'm interested in. So um, I'm going to, I'll wrap this up right now, Debbie, but it is a conversation that I and others are interested in having with the district and the appropriate staff, personnel, to see if we can kind of flush out the reasons why. So thank you very much. Great. All right. Um, so I don't have any other cards so at this time. Um, Rob, I know you're newly appointed to legislative, so I wanted to see, give you an opportunity if you had an update that you wanted to provide for us tonight. On the specific update, we spent a lot of time over the holiday break. Um, <laughs> about a month since we last met, but I know that they're we're gearing up for some um, time in Olympia. Both of the districts, other districts are doing this as well. Um, so definitely have a lot more in the upcoming, um, specifically next three to four meetings Perfect. Um, with the legislative update. Excellent. Thank you. And I know we do have the student um, visitation to yes. Olympia coming up the end of this month as yes. well. So. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. All right, so thank you. So Dr. Watts, superintendent report. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to begin, first of all, by thanking everyone who's here and, and certainly uh, 
I think about our activities that take place on a daily basis and the time that, that we spend, uh, my wife and I had the opportunity to attend uh, the, our, our inaugural, our first ever honor choir uh, choral festival, which implies that there will be a second and a third and so on. So I first of all want to thank our families, uh, our teachers, our principals, our community members, uh, school board directors uh, who attended our first annual honor choir on Saturday, January 6th at uh, Camp Meridian Performing Arts Center. Choir members from our comprehensive high schools performed, and I would say those who were uh, better than most, they were all amazing singers, some who were better than most, uh, combined to form an honor choir. And so to see all of our comprehensive high schools represented in one choir that had the opportunity to be uh, directed by a guest conductor, VJ Singh, uh, a music professor from Central Washington University. It was an amazing display of talent. As he mentioned, students who were bright, intelligent, uh, musicians who lifted every voice and sang. And uh, my wife and I still talk about, we were actually humming and singing and thinking about the, uh, the stories that led to uh, the songs that they sang. So uh, it's not lost on me that that these talented musicians come at the the expense of the time, talent, and treasure of our teachers, um, of the lessons that they, they may have, or the, the parental support or family support. It also comes at uh, the support of our local levy dollars. Those are uh, high school students who excelled and do in large part to the work that takes place at the elementary and middle level. And those, as we've learned, are typically underfunded programs through basic education. So those were an example, uh, January 6th, of our local levy dollars at work. And I could not be more proud of what is uh, what took place on that Saturday night and what's to come. Uh, school board recognition. Now, I know we spend a great deal of time together. And to our newest board members, know that we will be spending more, <laughs> more time together. And I look forward to that. Uh, earlier this evening, we recognized you. And as five members of, and, and to uh, President Benghid Aslam in, in spirit, uh, recognizing that, that you are members of our richly diverse, fast-growing Kent School District community. Through each of, of your investments of time, that's countless hours, in the community, at board meetings, at school-related events, your talent, which each member, you're uniquely equipped with skills, attributes, dispositions, and interests that will serve our school district well, both in governance and leadership, and your treasure. Now, while no board member chooses to serve in this role because of the uh, great amounts of wealth and monetary value that, that are tied to it, we do know that. The reality is that your role is servant leader. And that implies that you're mindful of the many and varied needs within our school district and the community we serve. And as a servant leader, you also care for and invest your time. And the greatest gift that you can give, and that's the gift of yourself, to our children and to the adults who support them. So just as we honored you tonight, I want to continue that. Uh, and I want you to continue to be honored in your servant. Serve alongside. Uh, each and every one of you, I had that great opportunity as a, as a team of six, not five plus one. And immediately following our board meeting, I do want to make it uh, known that I would ask you and, and to our friends in the audience to stay for a moment, to meet and greet our school board directors, our servant leaders, particularly our two newest members of our school board. Uh, and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for your continued service, and I look forward to many years of service alongside each other one of you. Congratulations again, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Watts. All right, so at this time we have um, board reports and discussions, so we'll start with Denise. So actually, you stole what I was going to talk about, Dr. Watts. We can, we can share it. It's, <laughs> yes, it's I too was at the concert, <laughs> yes. Um, and it was amazing and wonderful, and, and I'm blessed that my son is actually one of the participants. And so, but I think one of the things that really struck me was when the conductor talked about the friendships that had formed. So it was over two days. So they started practicing on Friday. They were at KM all day Friday, and then the Saturday performance. And he talked about the beginning where you had all these kids from these four different schools kind of separate and kind of sticking to their own groups. And by the end of the day, they had 
form new friendships. And, and it was just, that was really powerful to me. And I remember seeing, um, as I was going to the event, I drove and I was going to get something to eat with my husband before we went. And I saw my son with his car full of kids that I didn't even recognize. And I'm like, who are all these kids? But they had made friends and they went to lunch together. And I thought it was fantastic. And so that was really, really moving and a really, really um, great opportunity. Um, so I wanted to share that. And I also wanted to share, this is my second school board meeting and I've been honored and sworn in and got candy and I'm just like, wow, this is great. <laughs> is this what it's like? Is this what it's like? I know. <laughs> So um, I appreciate, yes, and I appreciate the honor and the thanks from everyone. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Karen? Yeah, I was at the Honor Choir, first annual Honor Choir concert also, um, and I, I just had the biggest smile on my face when the um, BJ Singh from Central was talking. He was so enthusiastic, and I thought, oh, these kids have had two days of him, mm -hmm. this enthusiastic music man and composer, and, he, and they actually sang something that he composed. And it was, it was just wonderful. Um, I'm sure they can remember that a lot. And I, I just wanted to point out um, that each of the high schools, um, the three high schools that have big choirs performed first, and then we had the honor choir where there were students from all the high schools, comprehensive high schools. But Kentwood performed a piece that was very, um, I would say, avant-garde, which I love. And they did it beautifully. It, and they're going to Carnegie Hall in March, is yeah. it March? No, May. May? Mm -hmm. I know it was an M month. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> to perform. So I, I, was, I was very impressed. I know when my boys were in high school, um, their band conductor did music like that, and it was it was just incredible, right. just very forward thinking. Mm -hmm. So, kudos to to all of the students that were there and the, the teachers who worked with them. I also, um, as I said earlier tonight, I don't remember when exactly, but um, I'm on the multi-tiered sur support service committee, advisory committee. I keep thinking of the name of it. Um, you know, in the last, well, maybe five years, we've worked on PBIS. We've talked about PBIS. And this is, it's renamed because it's more comprehensive. It, it deals with not only behavior, but it, it behaves, um, goes to social and emo emotional learning. It's academic and non-academic behaviors. Um, and this is now district-wide, starting out, and, and the schools are at different levels, but we're, we're trying to standardize it so that all schools are looking at it the same way. And it's going to take time. When they sat in the meeting, and I thought, oh my goodness, there's a lot of horizontal work that needs to be done here before we actually start moving vertically. But that's what's in process. And what I, we talked about is that, you know, there's, there are three tiers. There's the tier one is, is about 80% of all the students, although everyone receives tier one um, support. Um, there's some, tier two, maybe 15% of the students that need a little extra support, and then there's the tier three um, support level. We need to make sure that we don't call them tier one students, tier two students, and tier three students. They are at the support level. That's the support level that they're at, but that, that doesn't mean that they're that student. So anyway, that's, um, those are some of the things I took away from it, and I know there's a lot more, but um, it... I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to get this across, across the boards here. I'm also just doing, since it's mentoring month, just an update on my mentees. I have three of them. One of them is starting her winter quarter at Highline as a sophomore. I have started with her as a senior in high school at KPA, and, and she's doing well, and just watching her um, mature and accept more responsibility. It's just, it's a one, just a wonderful thing. Um, my, I've got a high school um, student who's undertaking a very optional situation. I'm not gonna explain what it is, but she's undertaking a very optional uh, situation to uh, reclaim some of her credits, which is a very positive thing. And then I have my fifth grader who is um, learning how to play games without getting angry. 
<laughs> and and, and lear <laughs> learning that she can lose and I can win and she can win and I can lose and I model that for her. <laughs> so anyway, I've got a, I've been with this my third year with her too and so it's it's been fun. And again, um, you know these kids need a lot and it's just it's really rewarding to be able to give to them. So that's it. Thank you. Ross? I had one topic I wanted to bring up. It's not as, as, as happy and nice as we might think, but because we all spent, we haven't met in a month, because um, we all spent most of the winter break with our families, whatever we were doing, um, you know, but I got some, some realization as my kids went back to school. Um, each of them went back last week, and there were two or three students who did not return from winter break. Their families moved away, whatever, whatever circumstances happened, they kind of realized that as a school, we are the social safety net for a lot of these kids. We see, the teachers see them more than their parents do sometimes, and even when there is a small break, a couple week break, that it, um, it can have a major impact on their lives, and that you know what we're doing, trying to keep kids in school, being mentors as appropriate, um, really kind of hit home um, as we go forward. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to report. I got the opportunity, uh, a personal note, my daughter had a baby over the break, and so I just recently got back in town and are wishing I was really back there still. But uh, <laughs> but I did have an opportunity to go and meet with um, my mentee this week, and um, I felt really bad when I was out of town last week and couldn't meet with him, so I made sure that he knew where I was and why I wasn't there. But... Um, we are also working on how to play games within rules. Um, and <laughs> that it's okay to make up rules, but you still have to play within those rules. So, um, but it's just, I'm always amazed when I'm in the schools and when you see firsthand what the difference a caring professional makes in the lives of those children and how much they look towards that and they need that. So, um, and I know also talking to my son who's doing his student internship right now to become a teacher, and just I had the opportunity to talk to him this week, and he was very excited. He's like, Mom, we just did reassessments of our kindergartners, and we had ones that made such incredible growth, and just watching, and then also hearing when he had one that had was moving, and he was so concerned about that student. And I know that our teachers at our district are the same way. They have that deep concern for those students, and all of us here who work with students of making sure that we're really providing them with what they need to be successful and not looking at them as a tier or as this or that, but really caring about each and every one. So I know as we work at budget presentations and we look at things and we say our enrollment numbers drop, I know that as a district, one of the things we're looking at is what do we do to make sure that those numbers don't drop? Because it's not just an impact to budget, it's an impact to lives. So as we start out this new year, I wanted to say thank you, welcome back, we appreciate what you do, and it is a team, and it takes all of us to make sure our students are successful. So on that, we shall adjourn. Have a wonderful night, and we will see you again soon. Thank you.